This week I've been driving the 2018 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300. This is the coupe version of the GLC SUV, so let's jump on over and take a closer look. drive a Mercedes, I feel like I need a refresher course on their naming convention for their lineup. And if I do this for a living and it's uh, a little bit confusing for me, then I'm sure that it's confusing for you guys too. So uh, let's, um, let's dive into that really quick. All right, so for the US market, basically you have an A class, a C class, an E class, and an S class, going from uh, least expensive to most expensive, basically. Um, so the a class is one of their lower end sedans and the S class is their top of the line sedan. SUVs are delineated with a GL. So in similar fashion, the GLA, A class GL is uh, their bottom of the line and the GLS is their top of the line. They also have a GLC, which is this one, and the GLE. The GLC used to be their base class SUV, but now they have the GLA, which is a vehicle that we drove at the Truck Rodeo last year and have a video. I'll link it up in the iCards and uh, down in the description below if it's something you're interested in checking out. And obviously this doesn't cover the entire range of Mercedes products, but it's a good introductory course, um, kind of a 101 lesson to the naming convention for Mercedes. So the whole coupe styled SUV is kind of growing in popularity and I can see why, but this is um, one of Mercedes answers to that style. You can get a normal GLC that's got a normal SUV style or you can get this coupe version that's back end has a more raked trunk um, and an overall more coupe style look. Around the front is a little bit different as well as the front um, grill here has only one crossbar where the regular GLC has two crossbars up front. Of course, within each class, you can have different powertrain options. This one, because it's a GLC 300, you get a two liter turbocharged engine under the hood. This engine pushes 241 horsepower and 273 foot pounds of torque matched up to a nine speed automatic transmission. This setup can get this sporty SUV from zero to 60 in 6.4 seconds. You can also get a GLC E, which is their plug-in hybrid version, but it doesn't come in the coupe style. So uh, we're not really gonna talk about that in this review. If you're looking for something a little more sporty, obviously you can get the AMG. They do make an AMG GLC 43 coupe, which has a 3.0 liter V6 by turbo engine pushing 362 horsepower and 384 foot-pounds of torque. This is much quicker with a 0 to 60 time of 4.8 seconds. Of course, the AMG is gonna bump that base price up to over $60,000. And remember, this is the more baseline SUV for Mercedes. But uh, we'll jump back into price a little bit later. Looking inside this GLC, there's no doubt it's a Mercedes-Benz. Comparing it to the AMG C63 I drove a few weeks ago, there's a lot of similarities. This should be no surprise though, as it is a C, and uh, we already had this lesson on the um, naming convention here. On the inside, you get beautiful materials that flow through the cabin and make the interior very inviting. There is a lot of different materials inside this car, which can be um, can be a problem. But of course, Mercedes knows how to handle this. But if you just look at the door and you see you've got black leather with white stitching and then you got this black wood grain and then you have this um, aluminum uh, material for the switches and then you have red leather with black stitching. It's a, it's a lot going on here, but it all just works. You also get a standard powered lift gate, heated front and rear seats, no cooler seats or heated steering wheel though. You do get a heads up display, touchpad command, which is the touchpad that allows you to control your infotainment system, 
Again, I don't think this is that great, and I'm not a huge fan of the Mercedes infotainment system like I discussed in the C63 review, but it's decent enough. And you also get a bunch of safety features, including lane departure and radars to sense what's around you. For a two liter turbocharged engine, it really gets up and goes. And uh, the nine speed transmission is really quick. So you barely even notice you're going through nine speeds while you're giving it the beans. Putting the GLC on a normal everyday road, it feels like a normal everyday vehicle. It drives smooth and has an extremely quiet cabin. The turbocharged four-cylinder engine does a great job of having power on tap if you're looking at passing on a highway or making aggressive maneuvers. Our tester is also equipped with Formatic, which is Mercedes all-wheel drive system. I haven't really been able to utilize that system during the week of testing the GLC, but from what I've experienced from other off-road events where I have driven Formatic, it works really well. If you're feeling a bit more sporty, which you should be because you bought the coupe version, you can put it in sport or sport plus modes and wake up this thing a little bit more. Doing this opens up the exhaust, reprofiles the transmission, throttle, chassis, and more. Okay, enough fun and games. Let's talk numbers in competition. Like I mentioned earlier, the GLC 300 Coupe bases at $46,600. And the one we're in has an MSRP of $65,505. I think the base price is a pretty decent price for getting yourself into a Mercedes product, especially for one that's not essentially a rebadged Infiniti. Looking at some of the competition out there, I'll start by talking about the BMW X4. Now I drove the X3 recently and gave it a bit of a negative review. And a lot of you guys in the comments weren't very happy about it, but I did say that I'd probably like the vehicle much more if it was the X4 body style. I think the BMW is probably the more sporty feeling vehicle, even though the Mercedes has a one horsepower advantage. But the BMW is also $1,000 more expensive at the base price than the GLC. Looking in Audi's direction, you'd be looking at a Q5, but Audi doesn't make a coupe version of their SUVs, at least not yet. The Q5 has a base price basically the same as the GLC, but has a 10 horsepower advantage over the Mercedes. I love Audi for their design and absolutely love their new infotainment system and virtual cockpit display. You could also look at the Land Rover Discovery Sport or Volvo XC60, both of which I drove at the Truck Rodeo event as well, but neither really have a coupe SUV style either. So all in all, I really enjoyed my week with the GLC 300. If it was up to me in my pocketbook, it would be a hard toss up between this thing and the X4. But of course, at that point, it really comes down to brand loyalty and what you like better. There is no shortage in luxury SUVs on the market though, so there's a lot of things to consider and choose from. If you have any questions on the GLC, be sure to leave them in the comments down below. And if you're cross shopping this between something that I didn't talk about or I didn't cover something that you expected to hear, please leave those questions down below as well. Either way, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to us if you're not already, and as always, thanks for watching.